We know him as Mike Tyson, but did you know his full name was Michael Gerard Tyson? Sounds geeky. He was born on June 30th, 1966. Tyson never knew his birth father, but only imagined him as a streak thug. There are even rumors that his mum was promiscuous. Sadly, she died when he was only 16, leaving Tyson in the care of boxing promoter Kus D'Amato. By age 13, he had been arrested as much as 38 times. A juvie warden and trainer, Bobby Stewart, would soon discover him. This is more or less when Tyson's boxing career began. Early on, he won gold medals at the national level during his first few fights as a teenager. It was not long before he caught the eye of boxing promoters as a ferocious fighter. Fun fact, as a teenager, he was ridiculed for his high-pitched voice, but Tyson rather preferred to prove himself in the boxing ring. Tyson's professional career spanned the years from 1985 to 2005. He was a ruthless fighter both in and out of the ring. His nicknames are just as mind-cuddling, from Iron Mike to Kid Dynamite early on and to the baddest man on the planet later in his career. He struck fear in many an opponent and is definitely one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. Tyson broke many boxing records. For instance, he's the only boxer in history to unify all the major heavyweight belts. He is also the youngest to have held a title. He was famous for knocking out opponents in the first round or thereabouts. However, in 1990, he was knocked out by Buster Douglas. In 1992, Tyson was accused of rape and imprisoned for three years. Likewise, in 1997, he was disqualified for biting off Evander Holyfield's year. As late as 2002, he competed again for the title, but was knocked out by Lennox Lewis. Sadly, Customato, who was supposed to be his legal guardian, died earlier than anticipated in November 1985, and this may have been the only reason Tyson spiraled out of control as he became more popular. However, during Mike Tyson's reign of terror, even mentioning his name struck fear in the hearts of his heavyweight opponents around the globe. He was notorious for his destructive finishes, hard-hitting hooks, and frightening demeanor. Tyson did not simply knock opponents out, he destroyed them. Surely he was known as the baddest man on the planet for a good reason. And behind this same killer instinct was a smart team of trainers who played on Tyson's natural finishing ability while also honing a defensively capable boxer who moved with grace, displayed skills and poise, and could operate to a plan. He was simply a predator, complete with a powerful left hook. The rawness was what fans tuned in for, to see a punisher at work. Tyson developed his style early and learned to be precise. Evidence of this was shown time and time again with his opponents. He always had the presence of mind to look his opponents in the eye and still hit them where it hurt. His punches were always direct. Proof of this was in the many first round knockouts he won. For example, Tyson was in no mood for a drawn out fight when he finished Michael Johnson and instantly ripped the Florida native with a powerful right hand blow. The bout ended in barely 40 seconds of the opening round. Even though Johnson had a 23 pound weight advantage, he received the full brunt of a right to the head, and it was all over. Afterward, Tyson said in the post-match interview, I hope he's not hurt because that was a brutal wide open punch. My shots are so accurate and so precise. Not to be egoistic, but when they land, they're so precise. You can't just help it. It doesn't matter who you are. Because there's a law. When Mike Tyson hits you, you go down. The fact that this next opponent was the son of legendary boxer Joe Frazier counted for little as poor Marvis Frazier took to the ring against Tyson. Following a relentless barrage of headshots, Frazier slumped to the seat of his pants, seemingly frozen in time. The referee had to stop the fight. Yes, Tyson could make your knees buckle with his punches. This time, it was a terrific uppercut. And it was the same punch with which Tyson knocked out Jesse Ferguson on yet another fight night. An iconic moment for Mike Tyson on many levels was the image of a badly shaken Trevor Burbick trying to regain his composure. And it was beamed around the world during a period when there was no social media. Despite that, it still trended in its own way. While delivering a series of devastating left hooks, Trevor lost his bearings and was seen stumbling around the ring like a drunkard. And so Tyson had captured the WBC crown and written his name into the history books as the youngest ever heavyweight world title holder. Next on the bill was Larry Holmes, and just as an aging Muhammad Ali had been mercilessly served up to Larry Holmes at the end of Ali's illustrious career, Holmes himself was just shy of 40 and presented to a terrifying young Tyson. And even with serious ring experience, Holmes' legendary jab could not keep Tyson at bay. The youngster smashed home a final right hand in the fourth round, knocking all of the resistance out of Holmes. Joe Cortez, who was the referee, had seen enough and called the fight. 
two years before he ventured to Tokyo for a sensational humbling at the gloves of James Buster Douglas, also the first man to knock him out, Tyson was in the Japanese capital to fight against former WBA title holder Tony Tubbs. Tubbs had only lost once to Tim Witherspoon and had a sturdy chin, but not until a left hook from Tyson sent him staggering across the ring did he lose his confidence. It was all over, in no time. Michael Spinks was next, and such was the popularity of the newly crowned three belt champion, because Tyson was slated to face Michael Spinks, the almighty lineal champion. Spinks was unbeaten in 31 contests, and a youngish 21-year-old Tyson immediately tore up that winning streak. Tyson attacked the taller man with ferocious bombs to the head and body. Spinks was finally felled with an uppercut. Spinks retired after this matchup and never boxed again in a professional fight. Now we know why Butch Lewis wasn't too excited for Michael Spinks to fight Mike Tyson. For the Unification Series, former world title challenger Carl The Truth Williams had proven himself a capable competitor in the boxing scene, with some solid wins on his record. However, the truth which Carl learned the hard way was that he was about to sample the full fury of Tyson's meteoric rise in momentum. Williams tried to throw a long jab that did little to dare to iron Mike. Tyson then avoided Williams' left hand to slam home a left hook that landed Carl sprawled out on the canvas. This prompted the ref to stop the contest. Are we noticing a pattern here? In 1995, after serving only half of a six-year prison sentence for rape, Mike Tyson was eager to show that he wasn't heading into a permanent decline, but was still a heavyweight force. The world watched with a great fascination as Tyson returned to the center stage against Peter McNeely, a charismatic boxer with a heavy punch but limited skills as a top-level boxer. McNeely rushed into Tyson and the pair traded blows, but even a ring-rusty version of the former champion was too strong and fast for his opponent. And so Tyson retained his trademark first round. Who can forget Tyson's rematch against Holyfield in 1997? It probably capped Tyson's career as a beast of a fighter. But after that, there would be one more for the road. Following nearly two years out of the wilderness after biting Evander Holyfield, Tyson was again involved in a controversial outing. This time, it was against South African tough guy Francois Botha. Tyson tried to break both his arms in a clinch during the bout, which was at best lackluster. Tyson was behind the cards when he released a trademark overhand right. This would send Botha stumbling. He was down and out in the fifth round. Again, Tyson in spectacular fashion ended their fight too quickly and easily. In an unrelated instance, Mike Tyson tried to enter the ring with a freshly inked facial tattoo that almost resulted in the cancellation of the bout at the time. And here's another fun fact, Tyson's knockout rate was a staggering 88%. Phew! In a bout at the twilight of his career, Tyson once again finished off Clifford Etienne, aka the Black Rhino, in rapid fashion. The one-time prospect was visibly intimidated right up until Tyson landed a chilling right hand to end matters after just 49 seconds. Sadly, Clifford is now in prison, serving a 105-year sentence for armed robbery. Tyson's iron fist may, in fact, have messed with his head. So that's it folks, remember the YouTuber rules, subscribe, like and hit the notification button. Thanks for tuning in and bye!